Okay, so hello everybody. Um, today we're gonna create a bullet engine that includes a bullet as well as a bullet spawner. I want to do ECS, but it's too complicated for my head to grasp at the moment. So hopefully we can do that later. Um, so I just created a 2D project. Um, I implemented some basic stuff. I will explain this script later. But right now, before we put any bullets, we probably should code some um stuff for the player. So I'll create a player script for collision and HP, and then I will create a player movement script. The player movement script is pretty simple. All we need is a variable that holds our speed, and then we need something that updates the position whether or not we press a key. So what I'll do is I'll just do transform position plus or minus new vector 3 input get axis horizontal up and down arrow keys and input get axis vertical um we don't need these so I'll remove them I'm and I'll probably explain it first I would rather you see how the code works in unity than me explain it myself because how it works will make more sense and then player script which is gonna have collision and our HP so I'll create a variable public in start HP and HP and then I'll also create a public float called bullet cooldown basically um, it's kind of a defense so basically whenever a bullet hits the player we want to give the player some time to you know like um, a limbo period so the player doesn't you know get hit constantly this is a bullet cooldown probably will be something probably will be a small value um i know you want to make a void on trigger enter 2d so when a collision enters that is trigger then we're just gonna see if the collision tag is equal to a bullet or hostile or whatever you want to call whatever tag you want to give your bullet and then, if so, and if our cooldown, if our timer is zero, then we're just going to damage our HP. And then we're also going to print HP. I just want to see that when, I just want to get some feedback when our, when our player gets hit by a bullet. However, you can implement sound effects here later if you want. However, we will not be going over that in this tutorial. And then reset bullet timer to our bullet cooldown. And our bullet cooldown is just a small variable so our player doesn't get constantly hit. Um, and then in here, what I'll do is I'll constantly make our bullet a timer so it's basically has it's counting down and then oh and then our HP also needs to be start HP that looks really good our player and our player group looks really good I'm just gonna attach this stuff to our player so now I'm just gonna add our player our component player to our player as well as our player movement. I'll give it a sprite render so we can see where our player is at. I'll give our player a square for now. I'm gonna just change the size of our player. And then I'm gonna set our start to HP to three, our bullet cooldown to let's say 0 0.1, it's a small variable, 0 0.2 is um, speed, maybe four or three, I'll try out. Um, and then let's see how it, th the game works. And it look, oh, oh no. Did I miss something? Oh, our player movement doesn't have speed included in time, but oh, time I forgot that. Sorry about that. Make sure your player has your speed and your time that delta time. And then boom. And then Okay, so four is obviously too slow. Ten, maybe. Also, we probably don't want it to ease in. We probably just want it to be instantly. 
Solidus do get access raw. Probably want to ease. We probably don't want to ease into it. We just want to, just, you know, start. And then if I add that while in play time. Um. Yeah, our player definitely needs to have some space to do that. Ugh. Yeah. I think. Let me see how seven works. So it might be a bit too fast. Five feels a bit slow. Six feels good, I think. Yeah, six feels okay. Yeah. Okay, cool. Also, we probably want to give our player um, a box glider so that we can collide with objects. And a rigid body 2D. Make sure set rigid body to kinematic. Now that we have a basic player set up, let's work on bullets. We have a basic velocity that's making the bullet go right, and then a speed of 5, which is going to make the bullet go faster, and the rotation, which is going to adjust the velocity based on the rotation. And you'll see this later. I'm just going to create a bullet, and... And like I said earlier, our bullet needs three basic variables. Our public vector to velocity, our public float speed, and our public float rotation. Well now I'm just gonna set transform. Rotation is equal to quaternion, Euler, zero, zero, and then our rotation. I'll do for update is I am going to use transform translate velocity times speed times time dot delta time and that will allow me to translate this based on our rotation that's what's called translate so now we have this implemented, let's test our bullet in action. So I'll just create a game object called bullet. This time I'm going to make it a circle to distinguish from the player. I'll make it red too. The sprite renderer. We want to give this a tag of bullet because remember, we have something in the player script that allows us to, allows us to damage the player if it collides the bullet. Um. Circle, I'll size of it two, and then there we go. So now it's obvious that that's a bullet. I'm gonna make it start here, and then I'm gonna add a component called um, bullet. And I'll also add a uh, add a, a a circle collider 2D, and set this to trigger because on trigger enter 2D. I'm gonna set our speed to five. Our velocity to one and let's say our rotation because it's facing left I'm just gonna flip it 180. Oh we forgot to tag a bullet and also make sure that we tag it with the bullet um, and then I'll set this to bullet object and then boom and our console we have our player HP output it so now we have our bullet so I'm just going to put our bullet away for now. And you can see how it works. Based on the rotation, it will go in a specific direction. And if you even wanted to, if you think about it, because if what happens if we set our velocity to y1? It will update the, the direction based on our rotation. <laughs> okay, now that we have our basic bullet, I'm just going to set it back to the default stuff. And then I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to put this bullet in our assets for now. Put in a folder called prefabs and then I'll just put our bullet in there. Now we're going to be discussing something extra complicated. So let's go to our bullet spawner. <laughs> this is, this is a lot of code. To take in 
So let's dive into it one by one. This is our bullet resource. This is this is basically the bullet that we're gonna spawn in. We just created we just created a bullet object. That's the resource that we're gonna spawn in. We have our minimum rotation and our max rotation. And our bullets that we're gonna spawn is gonna be somewhere in between that minimum rotation and our max rotation. We have a number of bullets that we want to spawn per cycle, and we have a bullet is random. And I'll explain this later. So a public float called cooldown, which is how often does the bullet spawner spawn bullets, and a timer to manage that cooldown, with a public float called bullet speed, and a public measure two called bullet velocity. Our float rotation just holds the rotations of our of our bullets. So we set our timer to a cooldown. Our rotations are new float number bullets just initialize, initializing our array. And then if is random, then we're gonna distribute rotations. So is if not if it's not random, then we're gonna distribute our rotations. So basically, how this works is these are our distributed rotations. So the mint rotation for this example is one and the max rotation is 360. It's going to basically get an even distributed rotations. So 0, 45, 90, 180, 70, etc, etc, etc. And it's going to get even rotations. That are even around the min rotation and the max rotation. But it's basically the same thing, 0 and 360. And this will make sense even later. And the distributed rotations, how that works, is it basically, um... However, we also have random rotations. So if our timer is less than 0, then we spawn bullets, obviously. And our timer is going to be equal to cooldown, as well as making sure our timer goes down by time to delta time. However, if you're going to spawn bullets, you can see that if it's random, we have random rotations. And how random rotations work is basically everything's uneven. It's not evened out. So if you look here, the number of bullets is 8, but it's spread out randomly. Random rotations based on our minimum max rotation. In that case, it'd be 0. So our random rotations work is that we create a random range between our minimum rotation and our max rotation. So we basically run a random number generator between two numbers. It's that simple. We do it for each of our rotations, depending on the amount of bullets that we want to spawn, and we return those rotations. Now, the should be rotations is a lot more complicated. It requires differences, fractions, etc. So, for each of our bullets, we want to see how we we want to get a fraction of I, where it is in number of bullets. So if I is closer to zero, then that means that our rotation is going to be closer to our minimum rotation. However, if I is closer to number of bullets, then that means that then that means that our rotation is going to be for that specific bullet is going to be closer to max rotation. And our difference is basically mass rotation and min rotation. And our fraction of difference, we basically apply that fraction to our difference. And then to get the final rotation, we add min rotation to cancel that out. We just can't really do it with, with um, max rotation only. We have to get the difference. But then we have to go back to normal rotation, obviously. So that's why we have minus and plus. And then we we'll return our rotations. Okay, are you with me here? So, what we really just did is we basically discussed all of our variables here. We have our distributor rotation spawning here, this code, this code here, as well as this code, and this code. And again, pause shot the video if you need to write this code down. I'll have a link for the source code in the description. Now we're going to go over spawning bullets. 
so this is a random random rotations and then we're gonna spawn our bolts here. and the reason the random rotation is in there because we want our bolts to be random each time we spawn each time we spawn our bolts we want the bolts to be random well distributed we only need to do it once because what's the point when it's always gonna be the same we're getting object spawn bolts we're gonna just create a new array of game objects and then for each game object for each item in number of bullets we're gonna instantiate a bullet resource and set that to one of our items in the array now i commented this out because our bullet object was not implemented yet however we have it implemented now so now we're just gonna get a variable called b and this is we're getting our component bullet based on our spawn bullets this is the bullet that we're working with right now. And the rotation is equal to rotation i for each bullet. Our speed is equal to our bullet speed. Our velocity is equal to our bullet velocity. But the reason we have a rotation is because for each of our bullets, we want to have it spawn with each of our rotations. So you probably want to set the, um, the parent of the bullets that we're spawning so that the bullets are attached to our bullet spawner. So what I'll do is I'll just add our transform like that, and that's this transform, so that means that it will instantiate onto our parent. Okay, so what you probably want to do is depending on how you are planning on using the spawner, you might want to consider setting this um, subtracting number of bullets to negative one on the fraction, just because numbers do count from zero. And that's the code for a bullet spawner. That was really complicated. <laughs> Hopefully understand that. Again, I have comments in the source code to help you understand it further if you would like to. Now, let's put use our bullet spawner and see what happens. Oh, nope, bullet spawner. Yep, bullet resource, we want to use assets, our bullet, our min rotation let's set to 1, and our max rotation let's set to 360. Number of bullets, let's say 8, we can change it, is random. Let's do distributed for, actually we can do random first actually, yeah. Cooldown, let's make it 0 0.2 or 0 0.3, something short. Bullet speed, 5, bullet velocity, x1, y0, and then play. Boom. That is our bullet spawner. And it is spawning random bullets based between our min rotation and our max rotation. Look what look what happens if we change our rotation. They only spawn based on if they're in our if, if they're in between our min rotation and our max rotation. We can even try for this. We can try this here. And boom. You can see. That based on our min rotation and rotation they spawn. And we can even do can we do this? Um actually no, we need to reset it. If we reset it and we don't do random, look, they're distributed bullets. All the bullets are distributed. We can even do we can even do max rotation can do 180. And boom. All the bullets are distributed. So no matter how much objects you want to spawn in the area, they're all distributed around a cent a specific area. Around a specific rotation. So yeah. Um really amazing stuff. Next, we're going to discuss um, a bullet manager, object pooling, and also object sequencing, and even spawning objects based on time. Thanks for following this video. Feel free to subscribe. Also, there's an upcoming bullet held game jam. If you would like to join that, please do. Links are in the description. Bye.